Hi students, welcome to session 15 of Habitat of the Living. Students, this is our last session in which we are going to study about something new other than uh, something else than adaptation. So this is something new topic for you and I hope it will be very interesting for you. So let us start with today's last session of Habitat of the Living and let us learn about something new other than adaptation. Yes, adaptation and acclim acclimatization. It's not adaptations, it is adaptation. Adaptation and acclimatization. Now adaptations we know that it refer to the changes in an organism over a long period of time and there are certain changes that can occur in an organism over a short period of time. Now adaptations are the changes that refer to the changes in an organism over a long period of time. But what do we refer to that term? What is the name of that term that refers to this organism that occur, uh, the changes that occur in an organism over a short period of time? That is something new. Means there are changes which occur for a short period of time in an organism which help it to adjust to the changes in its surroundings. So that is a temporary change, not a permanent change. So these changes, this term is called as acclimatization. These are certain changes that occur in an organism and this is called acclimatization. So there is a difference between adaptation and acclimatization. Adaptation refers to the long period of time, the changes in an organism over a long period of time and Acclimatization refers to the changes in an organism over a short period of time. Just to adjust to the environment which, uh, in which the environment changes or the temperature changes for a short period of time. So for that short period of time, an organism, changes occur in an organism. For example, a very thick wool grows on the sheep in cold climates while in hot climates not as much as thick wool grows as in cold climate. So this is something called as acclimatization. So it happens in various animals. This is one such example. Another example, common example of acclimatization is altitude sickness. There are many people. Now we are not here talking about animals. Other than animals also there are some people also that live in, uh, sorry, that live at high altitude. So many people who live in the plains suffer from altitude sickness when they go to high mountains where the oxygen content is less. So basically when people live on land, there is that much amount of oxygen that they do not suffer from anything. But from pollution, seeing today's time. But if you go for tracking, then you can see that as higher and higher, you go higher and higher, oxygen content decreases. So due to this, altitude sickness is one such thing which is the example of acclimatization means changes occur for a very short period of time. Now, after going to high mountains and then uh, after climbing and then coming down to land, land means coming down to our very original place from where you started your journey to the high mountains. At that time, there will be no altitude sickness, right? So this is a temporary change. This is a temporary change which occurs in some people when they go to high mountains. So whenever people go to high mountains, they feel breathless and nauseous, means some, sometimes it feels like, it seems like you want to vomit. So people feel breathless and nauseous, however their body adjusts to the, to the changes in a few days. So what we can say about it, that they acclimatize to the changes in the surroundings. This is what is known as acclimatization. Right? So this is what is known as acclimatization. People acclimatize to the changes in the surroundings. Now, if an animal adapts or changes, something about them permanently changes. 
but acclimatization is when an animal changes to suit a particular climate but that change is not necessarily permanent right so this is what is acclimatization for this reason high altitude climbers like people acclimatized to the changes in their surroundings means they adjust to the changes in for a, in a few days or for a few days when they go high to the mountains when they climb or when they go to high mountains so for this reason high altitude climbers often stay a few days at the base camp and then they climb up slowly to a higher camp and thus adaptation is very much different from acclimatization so always remember that adaptation is different from acclimatization means one is permanent and one is temporary changes occur in both of them changes happens in an organism in both these things like adaptation and acclimatization but one occurs for a long period of time and acclimatization occurs for a short period of time right so that was all about this new interesting topic and i hope you liked learning about this new topic acclimatization this new term acclimatization now besides these we have been through many topics of the habitat of the living that is adaptations we saw some we learned about some plants and animals that adapt themselves to survive in some harsh conditions in hot climates in cold climates in polar regions so we studied about a lot of them but have you ever gave a thought that there are some animals who are in danger because of the human activities so this is something different topic and it is all about the animals so i hope you will like this uh different topic and i would like to share it with you so this is the topic named animals in danger so students i would like to share some information with you i would like to like to acknowledge you and i hope you will like this students just listen carefully that up until about 100 years ago most of the planet was most of our planet was populated by animals that had no contact with humans at all but however with the development of technologies and uh, the ever increasing need for raw materials such as food there are now few areas in the world that cannot be reached by humans so due to the expansion of the human population the world's natural habitats are disappearing taking numerous animal and plant species with them like if we are constructing road this is a very fact uh, this is a in fact that if you are constructing road then uh, towards this forest area or that area where there are uh, where there is much greenery now if you are constructing their roads and flyovers over there then what will happen that there are millions of species which survive which live or which are found in forests but if we are building we are constructing more and more over there we are constructing buildings and roads over there then what will happen at most of the forest area or the trees will be cut down deforestation occurs and because of this there is some imbalance in environment and there are many species who die with uh, with uh, with because of this construction so this situation is not ideal for humans as the world's natural resources are being used up but it is truly devastating for numerous animal species it is truly devastating for numerous animal species who now effectively rely on help from humans in order to continue surviving successfully so the introduction of certain species 
to remote areas by humans has an enormous impact on the wildlife there. In many parts of the world, the introduction of like domestic, some domestic animals such as cats, dogs and goats has had devastating consequences on the native animal species. So this is one such thing which we should keep in mind that there are some animals which are in danger due to technologies and ever increasing constructions by humans. So this is one such topic. Second topic which I would like to share with you is animal protection. Now we have learned about we have learned about uh, animals which have which adapt themselves to the environment. So that is something natural. But this is something real. Animal protection. There are many animal species around the world that have been subjected to severe overfishing and hunting. Remember these terms. Keep it in mind. Overfishing and hunting. You might have heard about it. Now government are, governments are in various countries are being encouraged to take part in movements to ban the hunting of certain animal species around the world. Even long drift nets were used for mass scale fishing in the open ocean but caused the death of numerous animal species or other animals including sea turtles, whales, seals and dolphins. So to stop this from happening various countries has, have now banned these nets from being dropped into the ocean in order to discourage the poaching remember this word poaching so to uh, in order to discourage the poaching of endangered animals generally for their body parts there are now laws against trading them like endangered animals such as tigers, rhinoceros seahorses and even corals are poached in order to sell in the medicine markets. So this is what we should keep in mind. We should protect wildlife. The third topic I would like to discuss with you is habitat protection. Now we have learned as far now we have learned much about habitat of the living. Now we should know about habitat protection too. Like animals depend upon their natural habitat for survival that we know very well in order to find enough food, water, in order to survive and in order to have shelter. So the best way to preserve the world's animal species is to protect their habitats and today many animal species are declining due to habitat loss including deforestation in forests as I discussed destruction of coral reefs remember this in habitat protection what is being destroyed just listen deforestation sorry it is deforestation so deforestation then destruction of coral reefs climate change, climate change is obviously not in our hand but the factors behind these climatic changes like global warming due to increased pollution and all such things due to increased poisonous gas in the atmosphere the climate is changing and it is causing the ice to melt in the polar region so that is also not good for the animals which live in the polar regions. A number of areas of jungle, wetlands and coastal regions have been declared sanctuaries in order to try and protect the species that live there. So this habitat protection is very much important. We should keep in mind that how we can protect their habitat so that more and more animals can survive. And one more interesting topic is about fights you might or you might not have heard about it but this is something new for you yes sites means it is the convention sorry 
sight means its full form is the convention on international trade in endangered species c i t e s sites now this was set up to control the movement of live wild animals and plants and their products across international borders so sites today <coughs> the sites today has been signed by more than 120 countries it has been signed by more than 120 countries around the world and completely prohibits the trade of more than 400 species including animals that live in various habitats that live in forests grasslands polar regions etc so this is one such step taken by sites the convention on international trade in endangered species so this is also one such thing which you should keep in mind but whenever it is in your hand just try to protect the wildlife try to protect their habitat right so we should learn to conserve not to destroy by our activities we have no right to destroy the habitats by constructing we have no right to destroy their animals habitats right so this is all about the adaptation acclimatization animals in danger habitat protection and sites i hope you liked today's session and i hope it was it acknowledged you somewhat So now we will meet in next session with something new with a new lesson till then enjoy and try to conserve goodbye and have a nice time thank you